Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's me, Candace the Aries. Come to y'all later. Talk to y'all about the young girl Rona. Okay, so let me get comfortable. So, uh, as y'all can see, this video is not like shining bright like a diamond, like it normally is. I feel like a pillowcase. I ain't even gonna front with y'all. The light was mad bright, and I'm just. That's not my mood today. Today I'm feeling kind of, you know, so I'm like, I don't want it all. I don't want it all super bright. So I, I legit took a pillowcase, like a light color pillowcase and put it over it. And I'm just like, this is what it is. I'm going to, you know, mellow it down a little bit for this little conversation. Uh, how y'all feeling about this coronavirus? Um, I'm a little scared and then I'm a little like not scared, but then a little scared. Um, we had something like I was talking to Mama Aries about this earlier. Like we had something that was kind of like similar to this, where they did kind of like shut stuff down a little bit, told people to like stay in their house and things like that. But not to this extent. Um, I stay in Illinois, Illinois, Illinois. However you want to pronounce it. Um, and we are shut down, like shut down. Like, kids can't go to school, everybody, you know. And I know this is going on in different places, different states, different countries and stuff like that. But, you know, it's always, like, really, really different when it actually happens where you are. So, it's kind of like, what the hell is going on? Like, I don't know. Um, One of the things that I had a big fear about. Uh, particularly when Trump got in office was like something like a dictatorship happening or something like that. I don't know if you guys checked out The Family on Netflix. It's kind of old, but I definitely recommend everybody go check it out. It's very informational, has a lot of good uh, information and just gives you a different view about um, politics and how like they work and things like that. Mm, it, just check it out. But um, I was kind of feared that uh, people underestimate him and they underestimate um his power because people want to sit and say like oh you know he's this or oh, you know he's that and it's like you know sometimes people put on that facade so that you feel like you so that you think of them that type of way when really in actuality that's not what it is even if he has like people behind him that's like pushing him to do certain things you know everything is not what it appears to be so um my personal views on this whole coronavirus thing is i legit believe now these are my beliefs i'm not trying to spread misinformation or anything like that like these are my personal views and i know i'm not the only person that feels like this like i legit feel like this is some man-made stuff like almost on some like chemical warfare type stuff that is uh going on i think it's population control like i legit do feel like it's population control um I feel like people are people are dying from it, but people die from the flu as well. But I kind of feel like it's more publicized. And I feel like when, when stuff is on the news, people take it a little bit more serious than when it's just kind of like talked about on the street. So I kind of feel like if people were, if the news was talking about like how many people die from the flu and stuff like that, like people would be like really, really scared of the flu. But because people don't really... They don't really publicize like about, you know, they don't really talk about the flu like that. It's just like, oh, we get a flu shot or whatever. Even though a lot of times you get the flu shot and it gives you the flu, but I digress. But um, I kind of feel like because they're kind of like publicizing this coronavirus thing, it's putting people in a state of panic. Um, The whole tissue thing, I'm not like I understand it, but then I kind of don't because it's like if you can't go outside to get stuff like you legit need everything, not just tissue. Like, you need food, you need vitamins, you need medicine, just in case anybody gets, like, a regular cold in the house. Because you can still get a regular cold and it not be coronavirus. You can still get sick and it's not coronavirus. So, it just kind of seems like people are really, like, stocking up on tissue. Like, I ain't really heard nobody talk about water, vitamins, no kind of medicine, like, food and stuff like that. Even though I know people are doing it, but it's just, like, people are kind of, like, all about the tissue. But I legit feel like... This is some stuff that was, it's a serious thing. I'm not trying to downplay the seriousness of it, but I do legit feel like how the media is portraying it, like it's it's being portrayed as something way greater than what it might actually be because it's like people die from the flu all the time. People die from pneumonia all the time. And it's not really publicized like that. Like they don't even talk about the flu until the year is up and they're like, oh, this many people die from the flu. It's like the same concept, in my opinion, it's like the same concept of like how they try to say, 
um, a bunch of people get killed in Chicago. You know, do I believe a bunch of people get killed in Chicago? Yeah, but I also believe a bunch of people get killed some every place else too. Yeah, I'm gonna tell y'all in my favorite cup because I be washing dishes. So I feel like if you put a microscope on any state and you hone in on one specific thing and you don't really shine a light on other states or how other states are doing when it comes to certain things, like of course it's gonna seem like one place is worse than every place else. And I'm not in no kind of stress trying to say people don't be getting killed in Chicago. But I feel like people get killed everywhere. But I feel like they are kind of like putting a microscope on Chicago. Like I said, like I grew up born and raised in Chicago. Like I've never, I've never encountered none of that stuff. And I haven't always stayed in like the best of the best neighborhoods. And they're pretty good, you know. I was lucky or blessed, you know, however you want to put it. But crime is everywhere. You know, violence is everywhere. And really, regardless of where you live. But I just kind of feel like this whole coronavirus thing, I kind of feel like it's kind of like on that type realm where it's like if you put in a microscope on one thing, of course, it's going to look worse compared to everything else. So it's like people are dying, which is horrible. It's very scary. It's very frightening. But I legit feel like it wasn't supposed to be like that. Like, I feel like. I feel like this was not specifically for everybody to have gotten. I kind of feel like this was supposed to be in one place and then it kind of just like spread because people travel and things like that. Like what I've been hearing and stuff like that is that a lot of people that are that were infected or that got infected were people that like travel from other places, people that were like on cruise ships and things like that. Because you know when you're on a cruise ship, you with some of everybody. And so it just seems like it's not something that... I don't feel like it's something that was supposed to be here because it's like it was it started in Wuhan China I just feel like it was on some whole population control type stuff and I feel like they didn't anticipate people from the U.S. you know contracted it and taking it back or maybe they did maybe that was the whole thing about it I don't know but I know that they were putting up reports and stuff about how this one doctor talked about it in Wuhan they didn't want nobody to get it out they didn't want nobody to get the information out but the information did come out and so then people were able to track it back. It's like, is it one of those things where it was supposed to be every place, but if nobody would have told about where it originated from, then it would have been diff more difficult for people to pinpoint where it came from. So then maybe a lot of the implementations that's being put into place right now wouldn't be able to be put into place or wouldn't be put into place because they're like, well, we don't really know where it came from. But because it's like, okay, well, we know it started in Wuhan, China, maybe. You know, this is what they're saying. I'm just going by what the media is saying again. They're saying it started in Wuhan, China. People from the U.S. came back. They brought it back to the U.S. like that. People got on cruise ships and people con contracted it on cruise ships and things like that. And it's just like, it kind of like spread like wildfire. It's like every state has um, a different amount of people that are affected by it. Every state has like different mortality rates and things like that. But it legit seems like the people who are in the U.S. are not, they're not, they're, the mortality rate is not as high as a lot of these other countries or a lot of these other places. It blew up in Italy, like legit, like, it seemed like overnight. It seemed like overnight. Italy was like, you know, we got this many. And then it was like the next day, they're like, we got four times as many people. Like, it was crazy. And so then everybody's like, oh, you know, we don't have tests for this. We don't have tests for that. And it's just like, okay, well... Italy got tests. That's my whole thing. It's like, okay, well, Italy has tests. Maybe they already had tests and things like that. But it's like the tests are scarce. And I kind of feel like I know that they say that they're different strains of the coronavirus and things like that. But I'm like, it talks about coronavirus on the Lysol can. So it's not something that is new. Perhaps this particular strain of it is new. But it's not something that like people didn't know about. Like the average person didn't know about it, of course, because it been on a Lysol can with some brand new stuff. I know Lysol has always done good, but I know their sales have uh, have uh, skyrocketed. Them and Clorox, hand sanitizer off the charts, soap off the charts, things that people should have been using in the droves in the first place, but uh, we don't talk about that. But one thing I found um, interesting interesting was the um like the little test trial like fake trial kind of 
if this was to happen scenario thing it's called something 201 i'll put the name somewhere around here whatever it's on youtube like got a lot of youtube videos about it i check it out um it talked about how they came up like um a bunch of rich people and a bunch of people from other corporations and stuff like that a bunch of wealthy people pretty much got together and they was like you know what um along with john hopkins and bill gates and his wife and all of that stuff is they came up and they were talking about how um hypothetically speaking if uh, a pandemic started um with a, a virus called uh coronavirus and it infected like a whole bunch of people and it ended up killing like millions of people and it took 12 to 18 months for it to come up with a cure and like how would we as the u.s or how will we as a people you know be able to still function in the world with this going on type thing and when i when you read about it like they have um i'll put a link in the description to like the article i read off of the um the the post from the john hopkins like if you read like the outline of the scenario the hypothetical scenario it is legit everything that's happening now i watched uh, some newscast and they talked about how the vaccine will have to go through all of these different trials and that it would take about 12 months for the vaccine to actually come out and then in the trial like in the in the hypothetical scenario i'm doing quotes because i'm legit like y'all did this and like two months later it actually happened and then what's crazy is all of this stuff came out and then Bill Gates is like, well, I'm, I'm stepping down from my position. Like, why? 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 I just feel like even if it has nothing to do with that information coming out or people actually paying attention to that information now, it's like, this is a pretty weird time for you to, for you to step down from your position or whatever. That's just how I feel about it. But I feel like, uh... It's eerily similar to everything that's going on right now. Eerily similar. Like, pretty much down to the T. They even talked about it uh, starting in Wuhan, China. Like, so, y'all just hypothetically came up with all of this stuff. And then, coincidentally, two months later, a virus hit the hit the world that they say originated in Wuhan, China. And it's killing all of these people. And it's everywhere. It's not just in China. It's not just in certain countries. It's everywhere. Every day you hear about a state that had no body with coronavirus coming out like, okay, we got one person infected, two people infected, three people infected. And it's like, it's, it's, it's the same stuff. Like it's the same, it's the same stuff that they talked about, like in their studies. Again, this is just, these are just my personal opinions. I know people talk about, you know, people spread misinformation. I feel like if it's your opinion, it's not misinformation. You can read on it yourself and draw your own conclusions about the information that's out there they're not hiding this information from, from us it's one of those things where they know that people don't be reading they just don't be reading you can check a lot of your food brands a lot of this microwavable food it'll say on the food that is stuff inside the food that causes cancer some of the favorite cereals you know, I ain't gonna put these cereals on blast, but you can Google it. A lot of these cereals put pesticides in their cereal so that they could last longer. And on the box, it's telling you that this could cause cancer. Cereal that you probably feed your kids every day. Some of the cereal that they say is the healthiest cereal for you to feed your kids is said on a box that it can cause cancer. But people not reading because they know the average person ain't really into that. That's why when people meet people that's like, oh, I love to read. They're like, really? You love to read? reading is is literally it really is is it really is fundamental like you really need to read these things because they're not hiding the information from you they're putting the information right there nobody knew the average person did not know what lights they didn't know everything that lights all protected against people are just like spreading lights all in the air kills the germs but you wasn't really thinking about a lot of people wasn't thinking about like the exact germ that it was killing or what it actually had the capability to do like it did not a lot of people don't even know uh, how the, the Lysol expiration. Some people might think that Lysol don't never expire, and it does. It has a two-year shelf life per Lysol, per Lysol uh, company saying it. You can Google it. It's the, the expiration date is on the bottle of the can. Like, if you look on the bottom of your can, it has like an FAB or something like that. The expiration, the date that it was produced is there, and then it expires two years from that date. But a lot of people don't even look at that. A lot of people just like, you know, it's Lysol, so you could, you could use Lysol forever. No, it has an expiration date. 
A lot of people didn't know that it, it protected you against SARS and helped kill the germs of SARS and all, all kind of stuff. All kind of stuff that people were ignorant to because people are not reading. I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of that as well, but we have to start reading. We have to start reading. This information is out there, y'all. It is not being hidden from us at all. I just feel like this whole coronavirus thing is very, very, it's scary. But then at the same time, it's like, because I already am really like, I feel some type of way about a lot of the information that be putting out. Like, y'all be talking about Trump, but... He wasn't lying about this fake news stuff because some of this stuff is fake news. They do stuff to cause mayhem. They say stuff to try to make things seem worse than what they actually are. Like they really do. And right, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video off here a uh, video off here because it is going kind of long. I'm going to have a part two, you guys. And I'll see you guys in a second.